As a math teacher for a few years, I always enjoyed introducing my class to irrational numbers. Uh, those are numbers that can't be the product of dividing one integer by another. Uh, they go on into infinite decimal places with no cycling or, or repeating patterns in them. A common example of irrational numbers would be something like the square root of 2 or the value we call pi. Uh, one of the mistakes anti-Christian critics make is to think that they found a mathematical inaccuracy in the Bible. Uh, they say that God miscalculated the value of the irrational number pi. Uh, in reality, they point out an amazing awareness of this value in God's word. First, a little reminder about what pi really is. It's the Greek letter used to represent how the diameter of a circle compares inside with the circumference. Pi is the result of dividing the circumference of a circle by its diameter. If you could be extremely precise, you'd get a number something like this, 3.14159 and so on and so on. And it keeps going on infinitely. Now, critics often think that they've found a serious problem uh, with a reference in the book of First Kings. It compares the diameter of a circle with a circumference, and it doesn't seem to equal the exact irrational value of pi. Let me show you what that looks like here in, in that verse in, uh, in 1 Kings. Uh, it says, And he made a molten sea, uh, and it was ten cubits from one brim to the other. That would be the diameter. And it was round all about, and its height was five cubits, and the line of thirty cubits did compass it all about. So the compassing would be the circumference of the circle. Now, assuming they found an error in the Bible, they quickly point out that the circumference of thirty divided by the diameter of ten comes out to three, not 3.14159 and so on and so forth. Now, uh, the problem uh, with their attempt uh, of this easy ridicule that they think they found in the Bible uh, are many. First of all, the measuring unit that's used here is the cubit. Uh, the Hebrew word found in 1 Kings 7.23 is ama. Uh, this ancient unit of measurement was always an approximation, first of all, so we can round off numbers without any difficulty. It was the length of a person's forearm from below the elbow to the tip of his fingers. That would be one cubit. Now, the actual length differed from country to country as far as standards are concerned in various periods of history. Uh, people were different sizes as well with different lengths of forearms. Um, and since there was no Bureau of Standards back then, the concept of precision was virtually unknown. One individual craftsman would often just use his own forearm for the work. Of course, if he's using the same forearm, that gives him a standard to measure by. Now, obviously, they didn't go into small decimal parts of cubits. Precision work was done by comparing the pieces on the job. And so, how do the measurements of 1 Kings 7.23 actually work out? Well, the approximate length of most cubits compares with our current unit of about 18 inches. Now, assuming that the unit used by Solomon's workers in this text was about 18 inches, it says the diameter is 10 cubits. That equals 180 inches. If you multiply the diameter 180 by pi, you get 565.5 inches. And it says the circumference is 30 cubits. That equals 540 inches. Now, working backwards from the circumference of 540 inches, we divide by pi, and we get the diameter of 171.9 inches. So, did God let a mathematical inaccuracy slip by? Well, not exactly. What we see here is something quite different. The real structure uh, that they make uh, out of actual materials has thick walls. It's not a paper-thin class project in math theory. First uh, Kings 7.26 says, And it was a handbreadth thick. Uh, the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies that contained 2,000 baths and so forth. Now, when we combine the two diagrams, there's about an 8-inch difference in the resulting diameters. 
the measurement of one hand breadth is about four inches. So from outside to inside edge, that accounts for the missing eight inches. Now, uh, to show a simplified model of that <clears throat> might help a little bit. Uh, the diameter of 10 cubits measured the total outside width of the container. The circumference of 30 cubits measured around the inside usable space, which could be filled with the liquid. Of course, the diameter being the outside would make sense since you've got to make room for it wherever you're going to put it. And the inside circumference would be the important part because that's what you fill up with stuff. The thickness of the brass container is four inches, one hand breadth, all the way around. And if you add those two sides together, the eight inch problem completely disappears. If God spoke about the irrational number pi, it would have been nonsense to King Solomon. Yet, there it is. God knew the numbers, even if there was no word for pi in the Hebrew language at that time. Once again, critics need to actually do the math. Their entire criticism is both bad scholarship and really naive math. They need to look at the whole math problem, not just a part of it. And sometimes looking at just the part that pleases us the most is what helps us the most. The Bible, once again, is shown to be God's accurate and error-free communication to us. It's to be believed. No error has ever been proven in it. And so we rest assured that our Creator knew how to communicate to us, and He did it successfully.